This video describes the implantation technique for the hydrous micro stent and explains how to prevent the stent from diving posteriorly. So this is an example of what we don't want. The distal portion of the hydrous stent exiting Schlem's canal and diving posteriorly towards the iris root. So to prevent the hydrous from diving, you must have a flat angle of attack. And there are three main points here. Wound orientation, standing as far to your right as possible, and relaxing your hand. And so for a right-handed surgeon, you want your hydrous incision to be pointing towards the limbus on your right, and you want the incision just wider than one millimeter. Now this is gonna allow you to have a perfectly flat angle of attack so that as the hydrous is delivered, it will naturally be following the contour of the limbus. You don't want to implant the hydrus directly opposite you, as this will result in you having a steep angle of attack to Schlem's canal. So why does a steep angle of attack cause a hydrus to dive? Well, I believe the reason is due to the angulation of the outer wall of Schlem's canal. And so the hydrus is flexible, it's elastic, but this also means that it can twist and it can deform. And so if the hydrus is driven forcefully into the outer wall of Schlem's canal, it will twist and be deflected posteriorly causing it to dive towards the iris root. So you want to have a nice flat angle of attack. We do not want to have a steep angle of attack like this, as this will drive the hydrus forcefully into the outer wall of Schlem's canal and cause it to dive posteriorly towards the iris. Next point, do not deform the limbus. You must relax your hand. So if you're pushing forward with a hydrus injector, then you'll deform the smooth curve of the limbus into a corner or apex. And this has the same effect of causing a steep angle of attack. So this is what I mean by relaxing your hand. So here I've just pierced regular meshwork as far to my right as I comfortably can, and now I'm gonna be pushing forwards. So pushing forwards, trying to embed the distal one third of that hydrous injected tip into Schlem's canal. So pushing forwards, pushing forwards, pushing forwards. I'm wiggling the tip up and down, trying to make sure the hydrous injector is well seated in Schlem's canal. Pushing forwards, pushing forwards, pushing forwards, pushing forwards, pushing forwards, pushing forwards. There we go, and now relaxing the hands. You're gonna see that I retract right back around towards neutral position here. We're pushing forwards, gonna get a little bit more seated here, and then relaxing the hand. The eye comes right back around, and now I'm gonna make sure there's no outward pressure, just the hand completely relaxed, no outward pressure on Schlem's canal, no deformation of the limbus, and now I'm ready to implant. So now I'll show a few demonstration cases of mine. So I'm beginning this case, I'm going to pierce the regular meshwork as far to my right as possible. So I'm even up under the upper eyelid here. So open the speculum more widely. You don't want the speculum to be uh, pressing on the limbus. Open the speculum a little bit more. I'm piercing the regular meshwork far to my right. And here I'm going to be pushing forwards. So pushing forwards, pushing forwards. I want to have the distal one third of that hydrus injector buried beneath the regular meshwork. I want to have that well and truly seated deep in Schlem's canal pushing forward, getting nice buried there, and I'm gonna be relaxing the hand any moment here, relaxing the hand, see the eye starts to come around to a more neutral position. There we go. And just now taking away all external pressure against the limbus, having the eye in a neutral position, and a steady delivery. So here's another case, and as I pierce to break the meshwork, I'm working forwards. I'm having to work a bit harder than usual for the, in these videos. That's because these eyes are overinflated with viscoelastic to get a better quality video. So it is a little more challenging to embed the injector into Schlem's canal, really working forwards, pushing forwards and relaxing the hand. Have the injector point about 10 degrees superiorly, really relaxing the hand, no outward pressure against Schlem's canal. And just a very slow delivery of the hydrus. There can be adhesions within Schlem's canal and therefore advance slowly just to allow any adhesions to separate as the hydrus is delivered. So you do get an important visual cue if your angle of attack is too steep. So if you have a nice flat angle of attack, as the first window of the hydrus is advanced, you'll see the hydrus remains flush against the back wall of the injector. So this is very high magnification now. And see as that first window is advanced there, the hydrus remains flush against the back wall of the injector. In contrast, if you have a steep angle of attack, then the hydrus will strike the outer wall of Schlem's canal and it will be pushed away from the back wall of the injector, forming this space. And so here's an example of a steep angle of attack. Now, as we see the first window of the hydrus advance, you'll see it strike the back wall of Schlem's canal, push forward and a gap forms between the hydrus and the back wall of the injector. If you see this gap form as that first window is advanced, stop and relax your hand. So in summary, pierce to regular meshwork as far to your right as possible, have a perfectly flat angle of attack, bury one third of the hydrus tip, 
angle 10 degrees up, no more. Relax your hand and watch that first window very carefully. Thanks so much for listening. It's Nick Andrew here from Gold Coast, Australia.